Oh, we're live. Live with Matt Hope, artist Matt Hope in, are you in Guangzhou or in Foshan? In Guangzhou, Tianhe. Tianhe. <laughs> so what's happening? Sky, Sky River. Yeah, what's happening? How's well, it I'm going just there? I'm just making a rendering to show the new configuration for something and then I have to go to the studio and pick up tons of rivets and stuff and then go and fit a bunch of stuff together and then go and get more parts and then just on and on and on. Is, that, is there markets there like in Beijing? There are, but just nearby there's tons of little small supply places. Right. Right. It's, they're much closer and they're, they're more scruffy and hands-on, but they have white, tons of stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. Is it, how does it compare? Is it like higher quality stuff? Generally better, yes. Things are like newer and faster. And then you can just, I mean, literally you're going to buy something and they say how much it is and then you think they made a mistake because it's just so cheap. Like I, I Man, bought like a stainless I... steel, a stainless steel wheel. It was like two inches big, solid, with four other things. It was twenty R and B. That's like for people. That's like four bucks, three, four bucks. Yeah, and then we looked online to buy one. It was two hundred and eighty. <laughs> so the economy is still uh, pretty favorable. Right, around here, stuff, the economy but... is amazing. Yeah, right. Pretty wow. good. I mean, they're so, so busy, like by the studio, building more and more studios. And right. I mean, it, it's booming down here. I mean, I don't know about anywhere else, yeah, totally. but they're, they're, they're always busy here doing stuff. Man, I was trying to figure out how long have you lived in China? Since the end of 2007. Oh, my gosh. Wow, nope. so 15 I wasn't years. Really, I wasn't really living then anyway. I was just like there. Yeah, of course not. Neither of us have ever lived in China, of course. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was technically alive, but I wasn't really like, I didn't have like the full spectrum of life qualities. <laughs> no. <laughs> At some point, maybe, wouldn't well, that happen with the kid? Having having your son. Yeah, it's more like real life now, but before it was more like it's more like living in a van or something. But that was more real actually. <laughs> but like living in a big white cube with like dusty floors. Yeah, that wasn't wasn't uh, something I want to do again. Yeah, you did it <laughs> once. <laughs> yeah, I've done it once. Man. So, I mean, most people probably don't realize that you've like moved down to Guangzhou now. They probably don't realize, they just think China, you know, big in China. I mean, your, your close friends know, and your family knows, yeah. of course, but like, you know, um, outside of there, I mean, when I, Guangzhou, as you know, is the first place I lived in China, or was yeah. in, in China. So for me, it's, uh, I bet people still have no clue when they see that word, like where that is, you know, the Z and all that stuff in there just throws them off. Yeah, it's, conf it's confusing. I mean, it's kind of less Chinese down here, but it's kind of yeah. further away. Right. So how's it been going since the, uh, the, the, the pandemic? Which one? We just like have it, have it every two months here. <laughs> just starts again. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, one of the last things that we did was in Hong Kong and, and you had your, your, your suit and you like to survive like apocalypses and like essentially, I mean. And then you came and it was like from a different, came from a different <laughs> horseman. Yeah, right. Yeah, one of the four. <laughs> did you, Basically. have you worn, have you worn your, your, your survival suit outside at all? Have you worn it at all? No, no, it? lots of people looked at it here. No, I, I mean, I was tempted because there's so many mosquitoes. You kind of need another kind here. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh my gosh, that's so bad down there. 
it has I proved bad yesterday. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah. You'll get to a certain point in the day and they'll just suddenly arrive. Right. And I know. you have to do something. I saw, I saw that those, those monks, what they do is they sleep in tents with like nets, you know? Like they sleep, yeah. yeah? In, the, in the beds there, they have those big nets on them, right? Like those weird cage you things you can get. You either need to put a fan on so it's like being in a b-52 strata fortress you know with like a huge propeller going all day or yeah. try and burn those stupid things they don't really work or just keep moving around yeah this, you mean talking about those tennis the tennis rackets with wires oh I, I have something like that on the wall and then they fly into them but that doesn't really they still find you yeah they find Amazing. you i mean yeah so and there's multiple your, types how, how how far is your studio from from your where you live? Just in? like it's literally like five hundred meters. Wow! So you just walk it. Go on the mountain bike through the forest. Oh my gosh, that's so good! What an, it's, I can't it's wait fun. to it's visit like there. It's like a down. It's like a small downhill on the mountain bike. When it's raining, right. it turns into a sort of river, so you have to like ride up it. It's kind of fun. Right, 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 right. Wow. So what are you working on today? Uh, What are you working on in the studio today? That folding up thing I have to do. Right. Uh, Can you talk about that? What what is that? What is that folding up project? Well, it was just like I I had some idea ages about, you know, you always see this problem with art or anything, actually, but especially that you have this kind of like shipping problem, right? Right. So people want something like that has some huge visual impact, but they go through this shipping thing. So you have to have something big or expensive, whatever it is, and then it has to like go through this sort of bureaucracy of shipping. So couldn't you just yeah. have something small that just gets unfurled when you get there and then you could get around the problem? That's right. I, this is a. I think I, this is an older idea, isn't yeah, it? The whole like, this, the artwork, uh, the suitcase artwork. I hadn't really found the right way of doing it, and then yeah, like with James Webb Space Telescope and things like that, I was like looking more and more into different ways, and then looked into like like origami and aerospace, and then how those things kind of come together, and then right, you like. Ori, ori fold thing but done with sheet metal so it's right that was kind of so it's really the first experiment with it but it's like four meters by two and a half meters first experiment <laughs> so <laughs> it yeah i wonder about i i wonder if there's like an optimal shipping size for that thing, so, you know like right like the, the size that like the yeah you got the audio got kind of choppy for a second what'd you say uh, like a, a suitcase or a briefcase seems like the optimal size doesn't it yeah right yeah totally like a, i but i bet I, I mean i guess it depends also where it's going to ship because like you know the shipping prices are like dependent right on the where it's going and yeah. then like now and I mean now, and now there's like about twenty five percent tariff, right? If it's going to the U.S. or China, if it's certain things, so most yeah. things. <laughs> so it's got worse, right. right? So surely the need for this kind of thing might be higher. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so there's nine thousand. I've read this. There's nine thousand container ships on the ocean, and I, I think they're starting to move now in Shanghai. But because of the lockdown, there's like something like. 400 450 are of the entire global fleet are just stuck there oh they're like circling around aren't they doing like donuts <laughs> just off the coast <laughs> it's so weird isn't it i mean well, we're basically in a holding pattern yeah a holding pattern off shanghai <laughs> bizarre yeah. can you imagine being stuck out there oh my gosh <laughs> Like container ships doing GPS art. Yeah, yeah, right. Start spelling names out on the ocean. 
Rose is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! When was the last time you traveled around in in in, in China? Just Christmas. you went to a show, right? Yeah, just did, did you go Christmas. to a show? Yeah, and then after that, it was just like travel just became unless it's like local just became almost something you can't really do right um so it's a bit it's a bit annoying well, i have to travel again like next month yeah so oh can you so can you talk about that project like what's what is that that's the the one that you've been posting on instagram this this project is is going to shenzhen but another project's going to nanjing i have to install it there it's like a huge oh, really? job to have a, t a team go to install it with cranes and things. So, wow. is that the squi the squiggly geometry piece? Right. Yeah. Wow. So, like more more difficult. This one's just like I can go and do it with someone else, but that one we have a company to do it. So, can you, can you turn your camera onto it? Do you have it on the screen right there? I don't. Or I you have, on a laptop. I just have this thing oh. on here. Which particularly interesting it's like the the real thing or it looks better than the renderings there's no point even having a, a crappy rendering it's just for oh, just yeah it's just to show for the installation right. so oh the, yeah the, I'm, I'm, at least the, the real things already surpassed the digital whereas when the, the digital passes the real you got the problem oh yeah for sure right but those those renderings are getting um, better all the time with like people and <laughs> repeating yeah. people and stuff. And in in yeah, just the just the cheesy software's got easier, and you have to do less. And then the the lighting algorithm better and whatever. So just I don't know. It's easier to yeah. trick people. Yeah, for sure. Man, so you've been in there. I mean, I think you and me, like, I think we. Clement was in, in China too. I think we were like the first people. I I remember like knowing when this pandemic had started. I thought that was like it was. Time. I mean, it's like a lifetime ago now, right? It feels like it, like like we skipped over something. <laughs> I can remember like the last conversations I had with people and things. So it's. I know. Yeah. It's like nearly two and a half, three years has passed, but it's literally like. There was just a commercial break for a very long time. <laughs> so right? silly. Oh my gosh. So crazy. So crazy. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. And then it's like weird anxiety and stuff when you see people again. But like, whatever, that's over now. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there, I, I mean, you're pretty, I mean, probably, one probably the only. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh oh. Precision, precision no, rendering. Rendering's not really work, is it? So I'm not working rendering. No, the computer's doing. Oh work. yeah. <laughs> that's that's right. That's what's supposed to be happening. But like, you haven't seen any probably like non-Chinese for some time. Probably goes I pretty. Mean, not not very many. I mean, there was more, and then just apparently loads more have left right i remember awesome. i remember i was like matt maybe you should go to the i was like sending you the embassy and stuff i was like maybe you should <laughs> oh my what? gosh i mean after we got after we got on that last flight it was just out of hong kong it was just like i felt like yeah i don't know man it's still crazy down there well, hong kong but they're doing like the art fair this weekend yeah, I mean, it's just way more intense, isn't it? Because it's so crowded everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. I was in New York. I, I was in New York these last last couple of days, and like, um, man, I felt busier to me than like Hong Kong. I felt really? like you know people are like, and it's supposedly the office buildings are not really that full, so it must just be like you know people like want to be out they're like done with it you know they just want to like hang out and stuff and like and like see people and you know well new, new york has a street doesn't it hong kong's just like people walking yeah right? that's right but like new york has Pretty cafe much. 
problem doesn't I mean it's like you either go somewhere or you go inside there's no like kind of yeah I think the thing I like right? about Hong Kong though I was telling yeah I was telling Rodell about this like the Hong Kong thing I like about it is so organic like the the roads and then there's just like like nature kind of in there but New York is like this it's like they really gritted that thing up man that is so crazy I mean even London doesn't really have that kind of hyper grid no. you know what I mean very they, very bizarre like Guangzhou it's just like a load of spaghetti <laughs> yeah right I know yeah. I know yes you, you you don't know where you are like you can't yeah get, like your, get lost man so they're doing the art fair this weekend in in Hong Kong can you believe that yeah I saw pictures still happening but it's still like these things where it's I mean, like that's... a like one of these ships flying to Mars in a science fiction film and it's like all the people are in like suspended animation <laughs> just wheel them out <laughs> they just have like one or two people walking around and then they they, they try and yeah. make it look like all the people and it's not yeah it's still weird yeah I, right yeah i guess they call it the like ghost fairs they call them ghost fairs so like they just have like the workers and stuff there and then they ship in the work and then you they even have the option for like their staff to run your booth isn't yeah that, and then they bizarre? have a drone flying around it taking pictures which basically makes it into a cgi rendering I, I mean, why even, you know, do you need to go? I mean, at all? Yeah, I mean, didn't they just didn't take pictures of work and create it in a 3D model and then not even have it? I, yeah, exactly. Exactly. At that point, if no one's there, there's no point. It's like vanity space, isn't it? <laughs> just take it back. It's like, yeah, it's a pretty odd situation. I mean, it's like virtual. Yeah. So for anybody who's tuning in, so this is being recorded. It's going on the YouTube. So Matt and I met in San Diego. Can you believe that? Like, man, a long time ago now. Not so that's too. like 20, 2001, right? 2001, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Wow. So we're, we're going on, uh, how many years is that? 20? <laughs> 21 years of knowing each other that's pretty pretty crazy <laughs> not, not 30 years though oh we're gonna get there that's good we're gonna get there for sure <laughs> the, the world's gonna be much stranger it's pretty amazing that this works actually but so yeah, we went to school together what it works pretty well i never got into all, the, all of that um other thing i avoided it yeah the, i figured uh, i figured i figured this this would work and what wouldn't work is like whatsapp or those other things you know what i mean for you know people maybe don't realize that the internet well the internet's filtered everywhere but there's filtering there and particularly on things that are used all the time so sometimes things like this that are like no one's it's really like, using works so I had to finally give in to Apple just because if you use a Samsung phone here, they've made it so hard, like the, like the clusterfuck between Google VPNs and then all of these other things. It just yeah. destroys, outweighs the benefit. So I know, it's just, I know. You can't yeah. do it. I know. The first person in, in our kind of friend area like was Basil, and he was the one, he was like, doing all that stuff in Siri and stuff. And like, right. he was like, it's the only thing that works in the field. <laughs> and like, I mean, it was the same for me. I, I think one of those big trips, I was like, nothing was working. I just went to the I, Apple store and it just freaking works. It did it. Yeah, and I think the other thing about it. <laughs> it's like this kind of, oh, I support open source DIY fucking bullshit or do you just want something that works yeah it's like you go to the car dealership and you're like um i it's like i hate working on bicycles i'd rather it just works i don't want to you know mess around with it. 
Yeah. Well, every, every, every few years, every 10 years, maybe <laughs> I've worked yeah. out some really good problems that way, but yeah, I'm totally with you here, here I, locally. Now I've got a, a guy, a bike guy. My, my point, I'd rather make new things that do something interesting rather than just play something just to like support some oh, yeah. being cause, you know? Like, oh, totally. And the other, the other, the other thing I realized about the Apple phone is like, like we're in art work, we're in art, the art field. And like the image is like standard. If you don't have it, it's just people can't see it. They just think it's crap. Yeah, you're yeah. out. You're out of it. That's it's like problem. a lab coat for like a scientist, right? <laughs> it's the kind of conformity, but it's just, just do it and then forget about it. Get over it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think that's another thing, like people have that, that weird that stereotype that in China, like you're not you know, free to do anything, et cetera, et cetera. But it's like, what, what, what are you really saying? And like, does it really matter? I think that people have a lot bigger, like aggrandized view, right? It's well, what, how do you define freedom anyway? It's like, I can cycle through that wasteland forest there and no one ever stopped me. I don't even know it's legal to go in it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I mean, have no idea. Whereas it, there's no signs or anything. I mean, if you go somewhere like that in the UK, it will say no mountain bikes. Yeah, right. And if you do it here in the US, you might get gunned down. I mean, seriously. Like, like the UK, there might be signs or things that you, you right. have to, you know, just because they have all that stuff in here. They ha yeah. don't have it. That's some kind of freedom, right? I mean, I don't know if it's legitimate. Like freedom, some kind of freedom. Yeah, right. I mean, how many do yeah, you have? Like a, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know you what I mean, that whole thing? Pe people think what they're saying is so important and valuable. And like, they think that like, they're just gonna get like picked up because they, you know, they like farted or did something, you know, some, you know, they had some idea and like, Ooh, I can't say that, you know, but it's like, mm, I don't know. You have a kid, you have a family, you just work, you know, you get your stuff done, you make your work happen. Yeah. The, the whole thing changes a bit. Yeah. But no hangovers. Yeah. Yeah. No, no more. <laughs> so can you go out there and stuff? Can you go and like, Go to you the can, store, or do you have to have Matt? Yeah, I mean, downstairs there's all kinds of crap shops and things. It's just everything. Oh yeah, so you can go around like and get stuff and everything. Oh, yeah, like the just, malls like back open. You can go to shopping centers if you want. I mean, I avoid them because then you have to like scan those codes and do all that rubbish. Oh my gosh! Yeah, just and stay I, out of that. Yeah, I can't stand any of that. And then it's like oh someone was steal your bicycle or, you know. So I just, I don't go near those. They're yeah, is it, I bet there's still some places on the edge of like, like in those little yeah, villages. It's not, that's just not for me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, what's, um, what's your, oh, when you get out of, well, oh, you got, you got, get out of, Whenever you like, yeah. whenever you travel again, what's your, um, where are you going to go? Go home. <laughs> <laughs> Which home? You mean the UK? You mean to see your, your dad and your family and like, no, I, I kind of feel like the U S is like another home for me anyway. Of, of course it is kind of. for sure. So I, I feel that way too. I'm, you can, um, so you, you can know, just somewhere you can else. unpack that yeah totally you can unpack that whenever you're like you know you start thinking about something like ucsd like st grad school or something you know yeah. all in this those people are there you know so it is it is very much like that those other homes yeah man but that also your artwork is all over the place too right and that's a whole other thing like you have all these collectors of your work and problem yeah <laughs> trying to keep tabs on them or even just keeping talking to them is is like yeah. a job 
have you had have you had some um have some of those collecting stuff like on calling you up there or messaging you and all that yeah just just like yesterday today i have to go and like reconnect with one of them oh that's good yeah, the, the, yeah the, the bread and butter I've, easier it's just like yeah it's just yeah, that too. facetime just works it's just like you're basically like there you know sure <laughs> I mean, well, that's good to know. Otherwise, you're like you're sinking under the the ocean, right? Oh yeah. Does your oh, okay? I'll try your. I'll sometime here. I'll try your. Um, is it your same number? From China, yeah, or I, is it a new number? Okay. Okay, I'll try. I'll try to do FaceTime with you here in a bit, you know, and like okay. check in. We'll tr we'll try to do that whole thing. But um, so this this rendering you're doing right now, that, that piece is going to go, you said Shenzhen, is there like a Biennale or something? There's some like show in this like new museum. I don't know a huge amount about it. I was just so stressed trying to figure out how to do it. And suddenly realizing my theory of how it work was completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> It like slightly worked out, then yeah, it's, it's been much much better. But um, yeah, yeah, and then the orientation of the thing was going to be like flat, and then it's going to be vertical, and then I don't know whatever. I I didn't even understand how it worked. I didn't bother making a model. I was just like, I'll just go size immediately. Right. <laughs> But that's, that's got to do it. Fuck it. Just get on with it. <laughs> no question. No question. I mean, I'm trying to, you know, well, let's think about this. Like Beijing, like back in Beijing, like 2008. Was that about 2008? That was in the, the housing market crash, right? Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, to analyze like all these different phases in your career, um, Man, it's like a big project. But I remember different times where it was like you were working on different, with different ideas of like speed of making work. Yeah, like how fast you would have like able to do things. Yeah, it's like, it, and it's like now you're like you're getting like it's like keep increasing your efficiency in in producing your works. Yeah, I right? mean. Yeah. Like hybrid methods now, where I, I I develop my own in in house stuff that can do things faster than a factory can, and do it cheaper. Right. And right. it's un unbelievable. I mean, it, it's just I was shocked. You suddenly got like twenty of these things sitting there, and you haven't even done anything. That's that's so it's, crazy. Yeah, people don't realize the sh the speed of stuff. Yeah. And also, like shipping of parts is like that day. Yeah, but also trying to eliminate all of those shipping and things like that. Try and work out. It's like trying to uncover something that's covered in leaves. You know, you've got to like take away all the growth, and then you can you can find that the fastest, best solution to something with the least aggro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So, like, I was thinking about it. Like, okay, so you you you're a professional welder in the UK, and then you 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 then you you really like that was kind of in between your your undergrad and then your grad, right? Yeah, that was that was pretty horrendous. But I mean, but that's kind of like this foundation for your work, and then whenever you went to grad school. I remember you were making these these pieces and it was like first it took a you know it took a minute and then you made that cube yeah it took took ages because the, the problem was after the undergraduate i made some like huge sculptures and then it was very hard to like retool and get new new small ideas after right. something like that. because I, I didn't have like the array of sort of notes I have on my piano that I do now where I can just pull <laughs> out. I've got like multiple keyboards. Yeah, right. Yeah, you have your yeah. own like templates. 
Yeah, when you're 20, you've got maybe one keyboard and a broken guitar. You don't like have all of these right. different kind of just muster up like any given time, right? Yeah. You, you've got yeah, like, totally. you're like, yeah, this is my thing, like this one thing. Yeah, great. What else can you do? That's, I'm not impressed. <laughs> right. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but, then when, but then in San Diego, like you made like that first piece, you, that big cube. And then, like, then They're after all, that, then you started, you... Masters. What? It was, like, all disasters yeah. for, like, the second, third year, and then it really started getting going. But you were then, also, you were so good at getting people, like, helping you, too. That was another thing. I mean, like, I actually, I mean, I learned a lot from you because of that. I mean, you're just, like, you just, anybody around was just, like, helping you. And stuff, I, I do. And, like... I, I, I leave the door open. My my workshop here is very similar to the UC Metal Workshop. It right. has a right. And you get idiots coming in and wasting your time and stuff. But people yeah. come in. They some of them come and help for free. They'll come and give you stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. It's like I no, I should be yeah. That's off to that studio own. Like yeah, yeah. I'm, this is yeah that i that i think that kind of sums it up you like that's definitely for me like i when i first met you you like helped me break through that whole thing of like opening the door the studio door and all that stuff and like then you just kept the man you just kept accelerating into it and then you maxed out the, the all the manufacturer all the the shops they had at ucsd then you like went all the way to like their high-end high-tech shops that they had like the scripts <laughs> where you're like yeah. working like trading trading like boxes of donuts and stuff and then you max that all the way out and see when when you're when you're working with um doug christmas and ace like where like you're having fabricators and people make stuff all the way to where you you couldn't get your work made in la and then it was just like the only way i can make this work is to go to china <laughs> yeah and now and now it's still kind of continue i'm still hitting walls on things i can't get done right right but that now so the, the, the stuff you can do around here is and it's just like everything i mean you you're in the fastest, that you want to do like any kind of highest tech work. It's just the place in the everywhere. world so that's all yeah not a problem just how much how much can you make <laughs> what's your appetite? yeah i don't that high tech i mean there is high tech stuff nearby but most of the machinery nearby is from like the 90s the 80s maybe i mean the tech has, but for doing a lot it's not lots of like nc machine so it's like it's not super super high end it's like it's manageable it's approachable right. yeah yeah it, i mean it, it gets too expensive you can't have a go on it unless you have a friend who operates the machine <laughs> right they're, and they're, you have to know how they work they're like very you know yeah i i, I went to some months ago and they had all this super high-end stuff it's all sitting there no one knows how to use it oh my gosh I mean, it's like, give me a power drill and I'll use it right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I mean, then when you're in China, I, you were, you were, you were going around all over in taxis and stuff in Beijing, like all, right. over, and not just taxis, but all over China and like getting things fabricated. And it seemed like, you know, we found that it was like one place really where a lot of the sculptures were made actually in, in the world. <laughs> That was right there in Beijing. Probably still people are using it. Yeah, or they, they, they have like one region that does one thing, like one one village that makes one component or something. It's like the weirdest. You'll go like driving through some rural area and you'll get to like Tap Town and all it is is water. <laughs> Do you know, like it's the strangest thing. Oh Nothing. my gosh. So... So, so when you moved into your when you moved into that studio in the outskirts of Beijing is when you really got into making the machines because you have this. It's like the first time 
you had your own like space to make like your own tools and everything you really you know i mean yours. That, I did it before i had made stuff like that when i was like 18 i i sort of made right. small and i even made lights and things like that and yeah i i always did it actually but just through necessity yeah right so sorry <laughs> My main I'm eyesight. Here. I didn't really, no one ever really said to me, like, hey, these things could grow and become something in their own right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, right. people, people at art school, you'd show them something like that and they'd just say, that's not art. Then I'd say, well, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Yeah, or some like people like like the sound system stuff. People appreciated sort of weird in between stuff a lot more because the art world was pretty behind in those terms back then. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm, I mean, yeah, that, I mean that's a that yeah. All they had. I mean that you were the one who pointed that out to me. It's like uh, in uh, the art world doesn't like bass. It's like. It actually doesn't like really that anything that's like enjoyable. Really, it's like no no, no music almost, and like the sound system culture is like the heart of it is like bass. I mean, and beats and people dancing and like you get close. It's like further away from the brain, closer to like the heart and the feet. Yeah, it's like looking at something, but not actually embracing the ideas of the things you're looking at. Yeah. So what the hell I is that? that really... That's yeah. like yeah, yeah. hedonism. Yeah, right. I, I mean, after hanging out at some of these fairs, I realized how much is this like, uh, almost like gossip, just gossip. People are just yeah. gossiping. Oh, he likes this. Oh, she likes this. Or he said this about her. You know, this kind yeah. of like surface level, like. This person slept with that person. This person knows that person, <laughs> man. Okay. Yeah, it's like, it doesn't really make you get up in the day and like get on with your like daily work grind and all that stuff. No, like, it's not like seeing a jazz music musician like bust out some sound in front of you, is it? Yeah, no, it just not at all. Quality to it that like really gets in your mind. It's just something like stuck on the wall that you just kind of walk past. Yeah, yeah, completely. But I, I mean, yeah. but maybe if you looked at the painting in a, in a studio with the artist and they talked to you, it'd be much more engaging, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's and that's part of the challenge of right now. So you have like a showroom. Uh, a little like showroom there, right? Yeah, it's not even little. It's like it's big, but like your studio, and then you have like a space for like your works and stuff. That's kind of cool. I, I look forward to seeing that. Pretty handy, super handy. It's just the the mosquitoes are pretty handy too. <laughs> <laughs> Nippy. <laughs> yeah. I, what? Yeah, I, I couldn't even go in there yesterday. They got to me. But, um, oh, no. Well, you got to get those coil things, right? They, <laughs> what do those do? <laughs> they don't do shit, man. Like, people light them, like, at one end. I just get a gas burner and just light the whole thing. So it's like something out of Vietnam. You know, like... <laughs> I just flame the whole room and, like, take out all the mosquitoes. I does it much better you just fill the entire room up with smoke and then they <laughs> like an... <laughs> yeah, just, you just gotta flame the room wow <laughs> wow <laughs> oh, that's giving me some ideas <laughs> but it's like yeah having that room next door is cool because i it doesn't have any tools mm. working there or make anything so it's pretty sterile and dead but yeah. it it stops me going in there and like, you know, making a mess. So you can go in there and just look at <laughs> It's like the, the, the gossip room for the art gossipers. <laughs> People need something like that because they go in my studio and they're just like, 
yeah, this is like a, a factory or something. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I've been there sometimes when there were some uh, <laughs> collectors in there. <laughs> like, <laughs> great. But you, you go to a, a, a real machine shop in China and they actually just look like an artist's studio. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Oh, right. And There's then they got the TV. Everywhere and it's completely disorganized. And then you, you go to a like a successful chinese artist studio and it it looks like a you know like a nail parlor or something yeah yeah right yeah i know what you mean i know what you, you mean. See what but they, they have those tea sets and stuff you know yeah. like it doesn't you gotta get look, into the tea it's not like you see a picture of francis bacon's studio with like paint and whiskey bottles everywhere not like that yeah right yeah right <laughs> which is what it was <laughs> yeah if you go to a machine shop in china they they look more like a francis bacon studio like you can barely that's see them that's so wild that's so wild have you is there anything interesting there like have you like Sorry? there's that african there's there's that like african village there in guangzhou before I, and like you know, I saw like one random like black guy down the road like six months ago. <laughs> you, did you wave? <laughs> hey, I man. Think he, I, he looked at me and considered saying hello, and then we didn't. But it's like, yeah, we've got <laughs> common, not Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's a new feeling or an old feeling. <laughs> that's yeah, so amazing. But, no, if you if you go in town or to those other areas, yeah, you see, yeah, you see, pretty multicultural. But out here, it's totally like monocrop, right? You know, right? Yeah, <laughs> you're you're very unique then out there. I I, I mean, there are foreigners lurking around, but not very many. Um, yeah, around. I mean, the, the people must have they must have really left you know, during this pandemic, the foreigners must have. Yeah, well, they've like huddled together more, you know, like round one fire. Right. You know, uh, like well, the Australian. Yeah. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> well, I've heard of some, some of the, some people just, they left and they can't get back in, you know, like at all, Sure. you know, they can't, which is kind of interesting too, you know. Depends. I mean, if you've just got like a laptop and and some debts, yeah, you can just leave. But if you've yeah. got like equipment, you've got like family and equipment, it becomes a bit more tricky. Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. I mean, yeah, where's your son? Your, your son just like growing up there. Oh, we, we really, you know, with, with our kid too, it's like, you're like look forward to being able to like come through and like connect you know on some level i guess it's it for me I, i'm here this is like the longest i've been in my home in the home area you know since right. i guess we first met you know that's pretty much yeah. when i exited that's also strange in another way oh yeah because i'm like an alien you know i'm i'm really like i have to be more calm and there's a different speed and all this sure. like it's it's like farm culture and stuff but i also learn i learn a lot about like business and I, i've been learning from people about like just i don't know i wouldn't have learned it i think if i was not here you know i don't know just like how to structure things and how to just kind of be calm like you know this is how, this one friend of mine he's like you know you just sit on the you know the car you know you just talk at the end of the meeting you know this is where you really make the most progress <laughs> it's like right. stuff like that you know like oh okay i guess i can't be like super fast like like the uk or the us you have to like listen to people right to the end in china people are just like yeah can i can i have this next week and that's all it is yeah right just cut yeah just cut I it mean, right off <laughs> there's not so much to talk about yeah <laughs> Yeah, I guess I guess not. <laughs> People go to work, they go home. That's it. You know, it's like that's life. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it.
Where, where are you? But you're in St. Louis or out in the country? Yeah, I'm in St. Louis right. No, I'm in St. Louis right now. Um, yeah, last week was pretty intense because uh, of my mom. You know, you know, yeah. she had this like back surgery, is like aging and all that stuff. And then, um, then I, um, then I, I, I scout. I, I did a quick trip to New York and got some things done. And uh, just kind of keep attacking stuff. And things here are a lot more open, and like I think people kind of come to the come to understanding of like um, what's happening and um, who's doing what, you know. And like I don't know, just kind of interesting. But like people aren't really wearing masks or anything here at all. So I've been going to a few functions, yeah. art functions and, and other things. I, I never wear a mask. I mean, unless I have to, like going to taxi or something. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Have you been to any, have there been any like art, have there been any art functions or anything like that? There is a completely like, Recently, non, non-existent. Yeah, like opening like, when was it last week I went to and a dinner and then yeah at like a month or similar there's stuff going on but it's not like not like rapid and tons of it right right so it, so basically yeah. you you pivoted into like doing things in China I mean there's I mean it's not like there's not opportunities and like big big things happening there <laughs> no there are there are you know, things there's tons there's yeah there's stuff you can do definitely and there's obviously stuff I, I have to get done but yeah for now i mean there's been just enough to keep keep busy and keep some money coming in for the last year, few years yeah yeah so right. what about that uh, I, what about yeah go ahead sorry yeah now it's kind of yeah, like I, stable so it's like the project I'm doing now is supposed to start in August last year. Wow. Right. So that was like a massive delay. And then that caused problems of its own. And then, you know, waiting. I mean, I, I just remember, I just remember that, that, that 2008 when the, when the housing crisis, I remember you and me just like, like what, what's going to happen. I remember like, we were so, that was like, I don't know. We had so much training for like survival. <laughs> I think that was the first real big survival training, you know, like what's going to happen. Looking at like a hundred R and B and working out how many lunches you can buy for the next week. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so shocking. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit grim. You did it. Yeah, it was a bit grim. <laughs> or how many beers you can buy. <laughs> yeah, well, now I don't drink loads of beers. I don't have to factor that in. So it's it's made everything much simpler. Oh, yeah. Yeah, massively. So what about this, um, the machine? Like, you've been posting these these images of the, the zero waste material. That looks totally interesting. Like, what is that? Like, how are you making that? Well, the last the last lot I got just the builder next door. They're expanding the buildings, and then they just. I said, "Have you got any of this crap materials you don't want?" And he's like, "Yeah, I've got loads, but it's none of it's flat." So I was like, "That's okay, as I I can flatten it out because I've got that special machine I made to flatten it." Yeah, uh, it was re really like last year all these all these scrap metal places nearby and then just you can hear it and then next door to me is there's a machine shop so you can hear the real products getting made and then behind me you can hear the products getting destroyed so this is kind of like it's so close it's bizarre wow. i mean it, you see trucks with new materials and trucks with those cubes of crushed stuff like one goes in, yeah. one goes. It's just this high-speed cycle turnover. Oh my and gosh! You know there must be a way to like 
can you make something good out of this stuff? Not like a, a cheesy crap, like, you know, scrap metal art project you do at school. You know, like, I mean, can you really do something real with this? Like, think about yeah. it seriously. Talk to some, like, engineers and things, and then they were like, yeah, I think it's possible also. And I showed them some of these things, like some Chinese engineer, and he was like, yeah, it totally makes sense. The Chinese government actually has a similar idea. Wow. To how to reclaim materials. Or, or something just to, like he didn't go into it but it it's gave me some like you know legitimate legitimate sort of uh sort of response that i that, could go yeah some further. confidence about it yeah you know like you can develop your own tooling and do all this stuff and all of this is cheap and uh all of these steps you take expand your 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 keyboard right your yeah, keyboard the, the template yeah yeah you, you get more yeah. instruments more ways and then you can you can actually apply it to new materials the old materials yeah, right. kind of like going through it's like you're picking samples out of a box right i mean yeah you, right like how dj a selector <laughs> yeah you can you can just like move through the stuff faster and um yeah. Some of, some of these materials, I mean, I look at it and then you're like, that's a crap metal fence. This is junk. This is like, yeah. my Chinese neighbors look at it and they're like, this is garbage. And I'm like, yeah, but look, you flatten it out. And then some art person comes and looks at it and they're like, hey, man, that's beautiful. That's like being on in gold. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, you're totally. In it looks like some pastel colors from some like yeah. formal painter from the 1920s or something. Some, <laughs> Look, yeah, right. There's something here, you know, like, and then you think there's of like, something there for sure. Rat Rauschenberg, all these weird composites or like Coke cans or, yeah. Uh, Warhol, how he stuck all these things together and made these sort of montage. Mm -hmm kind of different processes yeah but then another key way it allows me to exploit color in a way that i can't do otherwise you're right because it's already built in you painted i have some like problem when i start like getting into like should i paint something oh god i'm, I'm colorblind what the fuck can i do <laughs> right it becomes it's, like it becomes too yeah. much it just gives me some sort of solution to that personal issue that I have where I don't know what to do about paint. Right, right. Then the thing already right. has information on it. Because so, so often you've got, you go with the functional, right? Whenever you, yeah. you're doing these things, are just like sealing it, making it work, but not like perfectly, as, as good quality as you can. But like, yeah. then you add on the yellow. And I, I look at this stuff and it's like, it's already got a story in it. You're right. Which yeah, is right. unknown, but it's something you can engage with, right? I mean, for example, yeah. take a square centimeter of the, the five highway in US and you could analyze right. that instrument and it could tell you about the weather for the last five years. Right yeah highway core sample <laughs> yeah you could analyze it whereas you know you go and get a piece of paper there's no information on it oh let's put a drawing on it okay there's information now so there's actually yeah, information right. just our eyes are not great at picking it up yeah so we need right right but the, those recycled materials it's like the exaggeration of past entropy is it's more found. It's easier to see. Right. Thanks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like totally. You, totally makes sense. You think about a, a Jeff Koons or Anish Kapoor or a, a Bugatti or a McLaren finish of a car or a Tesla. There's no information at all. It's an evacuation right. of information. Right. And that's 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 part of why it costs something because they're trying to yeah. remove the information. 
plane room it's like a it's like an outer space right vacuum yeah it's so bizarre isn't it like like is that and if you get the higher you get the higher luxury goods the more the customized the good yeah but the, the less information there is on your material the more expensive it is so it's like a one in a one parts per hundred thousand clean room right yeah right <laughs> right yeah but i mean like you know you come from this uk underground music rave scene where like people were making like the more rare the record like the better the dj the better the right i yeah. mean this more is kind of in the ethos yeah the more homemade and kind of fucked up everything looked then the cooler it was yeah that was just a, yeah. the, it was totally um, anti what what have you do you have us any sound systems you made in there yet in the in the studio the same ones i had before i just like they're just hanging up on the on the i mounted them so they're just working as monitors just to play music oh, you know they, the cubes from Be from beijing those, those. I, I haven't i was gonna make some new ones some like flat panel speakers using um dayton audio exciters which are like tactical tactile sound as you call it they're not really with a driver it vibrates you mean like the yeah right like, electrostatic is that electrostatic uh not electrostatic no they, they still have a driver yeah. but it's directly coupled to a board oh, apparently... is this like those circular those like the, yeah those ones you, you, yeah but i've seen a bunch of videos and people saying how amazing they are now so <laughs> <laughs> when, when, <laughs> you know. Well, I'm. I feel like I got like a sound system debt. I mean, there's. I. I was looking through my inbox and I. I sent you these all these sound system designs. I'm like, is this like I. I gotta get. I gotta pull this off. I mean, this last time, like Josh and I. Josh is. We were working on this big table and we were really close. And we were very close that time to getting a sound system made. I even found. I found that place here locally with tons of like amazing used equipment. So it's like potential energy. I mean, that's kind of how the St. Louis is for me. It's just like, it's just like everywhere I look, it's like that, like five centimeters in the five highway. It's just, it's, it's, sure. it's hard not to turn away. And then like the other one, the crazy one is like, because of this weird, you know, like I think St. Louis is kind of the middle, like really the real U.S., but they have this like weird like racial divide and if you go into the north of like this one highway it's like oh it's a whole other you know it's like oh okay that's where like you know black people live and in the south it's like white people or something like that but you go right. so a lot of people it's not really that way it's just like there's just it's more rough in the north and there's like the economics is not as good but i biked up there and it's like mind blowing like, sure. I, like crazy just like something that existed or like a ghost town or something but there's so much to explore and like that's also like i'm eager you know for you to get traveling again too because we've got a lot of stuff to get done you know <laughs> yeah i mean not supposed to be here this long but i'm just trying to <laughs> make the most of it really keep oh, i there is no one who, who i know that would make more of of a hundred R and B than you. <laughs> you do a lot of a lot with it here. You wouldn't believe. Yeah, I mean it's pretty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean that's we, we're going coming up on like about an hour, so I just wanted to catch up with you and like these videos are going to be up, so people can tune in and it's streaming to like um, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, LinkedIn and Twitter, so it's it'll be replayed and everything. So we've got an archive. You can do a, a, a sort of. You can either just do it spontaneously, or or you know, have some pre pre planned ideas. I can gather more stuff up. Oh yeah, that's that. You know, that's my way. <laughs> do it when it happens, right? Well, I I was sitting there looking at your Wikipedia entry too, and I'm I was thinking, man, 
hey, this thing should make this outputs transcripts too. So there's right. you know some source material and other things here that would be useful. But man, sure. your Wikipedia entry, there's a bunch of um, information we got to get updated there too. You know, I can't do it. You have to get some like I trolls. I know. I'm the wiki troll. <laughs> well, anyway, Matt, um, nice talking and yeah. have a good rest of your um, day. <laughs> it's just started here. All right. I'm going to end the broadcast. But we're, okay. Yeah.